My name is Harv Roman. I'm currently with WCEV Radio 1450 AM. Um, I'm also with the Boys and Girls Clubs. I went to Chicago Public Schools. And once upon a time, I also managed the um, Chicago Dance Crew back in the day. What came up the most to me about this story, the real dance fever? Um, I think because it was an era and a story that had not been told by anybody else. Chicago's known for their house music history. Chicago's known for a lot of things in terms of the industry, but the stories of the dance crews were not told. And when I ran into this book, and it was, it was an accident, I was at the Olivia's record store, and the book is staring me in the face, and I had no idea what it was about. I decided to buy it, and then I read it, and then Jose Gringo and I um, had connected for radio interviews back in the day, and um, I think it was just finding it in Lily's on Division Street, which was the first connection, and that as you're reading it, you're remembering some of the things that you went through as a, as a DJ, as a dance crew manager, as a boys and girls worker, and it all seemed to connect with things that I had done in the past. What inspired me most about the real Dance Fever story was, um, it was an untold story. It was one of those stories that whenever people get together at parties these days, they talk about what happened back then. And the only proof of anything are the flyers and the pluggers. You can say, look, I was on this plugger. Look, I was at this party. Um, at that time, there was not a lot of people videotaping any things. I had a VHS camera that was like this big. But well, most people didn't um, take video back then. And I think also it, there's a resurgence now in interest in terms of the music and, and the dance crews, um, the production that came out of this book. There's, there's now a renewed interest in these stories. And I think the people that lived through it, be it the promoters, the dance clubs, the kids that were in the dance crews, or radio people like me, you know, it, it comes to the point where like, you know what, we're at that age where if we don't tell the story, it's not gonna get told. And everybody talks about stepping, everybody talks about disco, everybody talks about the Chicago, the house sounds of Chicago and the sound of the shy lights and everybody that came out in the 70s. It's rare for people to talk about these dance groups. And I don't see why not, because they, the kids that I used to work with, the kids that I managed, the Zodiac dancers were in the same battle as the All-Stars and the Golitos and imported taste. These crews kept these kids out of trouble. If they weren't dancing, if they weren't practicing, they may have been somewhere else doing something they probably shouldn't have been doing. And instead, they're getting the accolades, they're winning the trophies, and they're neighborhood celebrities. Um, there's not a lot of movements that can do that to young people. I think what upset me most about the story, and I don't even know if upset is a, is a good word for it, um, I think we covered it earlier, um, the fact that if the book doesn't get written, if the play doesn't end up on stage, this was going to be one of those stories that, that did not get told. Literally in the book, I think what probably was upsetting to me was that even though I was hosting parties and I was DJing back then, I wasn't knee deep in the dance group culture. So besides my friendship with Troy, who I went to high school with, you don't realize some of the tragedies that occurred. You don't realize that people were passing away. Um, cool Rock did, he went to Wells, he was one of our guys. Um, but it didn't happen often enough for us to become alarmed about it or for us to think about it, because again, I wasn't in that culture. Um, the play is when I said, wait a minute, you know, there, 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 there was kids that didn't make it through the era due to whatever decisions they made or whatever happened. The other thing that is, a, it's, it's a good thing, but it's also an upsetting thing. There are some family values in the book and in the play that are really good things. These kids got adopted by the dance crews. Um, the DJs became family. The club owners became family. But it also says that the actual families may not have been as good as of a family as who these kids were running with on the streets. So in essence, the kids were escaping their own lives to hang with their party crews and the dance crews, and they became family. And it's a good, positive thing, but it's also kind of a negative, because then what does that say about the family that you literally were born into when you're tighter with your crew than you are with your family?
I used to manage the Zodiac dancers back in the day. If you look at the famous rainbow poster, which is displayed prominently at the play también, um, this was a group of boys and girls club members. And of course, I had a boys and girls club background, and they used to practice all the time at the boys and girls club. Um, they didn't consider themselves a crew, they were just kids that liked to dance. I think the youngest, I think Brenda was maybe 10, and then my oldest might have been 14. And they practiced all the time, and um, Tony Batoy and I were friends back then, and we still are. And when he came up with the battle, you know, I told him that I had a dance group. And next thing you know, they took professional pictures, as you know. They entered them in the battle, and they performed against the biggest and best dance crews in Chicago. And I'll never say the Zodiacs were the biggest and the best dance crews in Chicago, but they were among the youngest. And for them to be able to perform at the Rainbow at that time, probably in front of maybe 3,000 people. Um, Imagen TV was there as well. That was Channel 60 back in the day. Right, Channel 60. So to me, and I told them, I said, just being here, that's victory. So they didn't go there to, Absolutely. they didn't go there to win. They went there to represent the neighborhood. And um, I think they did a good job. And, and each of those kids has done pretty well as, a, as adults too. You, you, you know Doris personally. Yes, I do. She was, she was one of them back Sweetheart, then. Sweetheart, yes. So it, it's kind of interesting how that all turned out. And here we are 30 some years later, <laughs> still talking about that era and those dance groups and, and the little Zodiacs who went up against the big giant scary all-stars. <laughs> um, and back then too, I knew, I knew Pinky because through the radio, we were giving away his tickets. We were going to his events at the Navy Pier Ballroom and all that. Um, but I didn't realize you guys were brothers. Wow. I didn't realize. And I used to go to your house on Drake. Oh, wow, that's funny. So, but we may we have met, we may have met without me even knowing right, until right. all of this happened. Right. So I'm like, what do you mean? Small, yeah, small community. Because, yeah, because Pinky was one of the characters in the book. Right. So I'm like, wait a minute, that's Pinky, that's Lorenzo. Yeah. And you guys are brothers. That, that right. was, um, that's crazy because I used to go to the house on Drake every now and then. The dance groups, number one, all the dance groups were the best to me. I, I, I always, I didn't see it as, um, I didn't enjoy the competition, the trophy part, I just enjoyed the, the performing and the accolades for, for, that the, the dancers would get. Um, so I always thought that whenever I would meet like the Genesis, the Zodiacs, the Curitos Imported, Bajapantis Infernos, oh they had so many, the Floor Masters, I mean they were all awesome because all of them had the same dream, they all wanted to be seen. Beef amongst the dance groups, it always seemed like the dance groups respected each other enough that we'll just do what we have to do on the dance floor yeah, exactly. and then that's it. If yeah. you see each other on the street they're not going to say, you know, start representing All Stars versus Imported Taste and there's a big rumble like in West Side Story. <laughs> it was, they, they all, you all seem to enjoy each other's company, you all seem to enjoy the competition, and, and again, knowing how tight you and Troy are, you guys bonded with the common, yeah. what, what did you have in common? The love of dancing, the love right. of music, the love, the love of, of clothing. It was rivalry only when it got to the dance floor. Yeah. So, uh, Harv, I want to tell you, you know, again, it's been an honor to interview you, because it's you to do the interview. And, um, and I want Chicago to know that this is a true legend, true royalty that's here. And my hat goes off to you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm not glad that you flipped the script in terms of the interview, but I'm glad that you're retelling these stories. Because, and the, the, the women that were here a little bit earlier, that, that left a little while ago, um, you did a lot for them. These dance groups did a lot for them. I've gone, I've seen back in the day four times. Did wow. I have to go see it four times? No. Am I asking Ivan for passes? No. Wow. I'm buying a ticket and I'm showing up. Um, even the day that they were selling it on the street, on the Vision Street, you saw the picture, I went there to see Ivan and, and Melissa, and I'm gonna get this stuff, I don't want a freebie. Because again, it, it's important to me that the story gets told, number one. It's important to me that you can't do the old hook a brother up, like I paid for your book. I didn't want you to say, here's my book. Okay. I, he paid there? for it and then he called me that he went to get he got the yeah, book. Yeah, I, I, it, if there's a negative sometimes with, with, with this particular industry or era, is that there was so much of that hook a brother up thing. And I was a promoter, I used to do events and then you get these calls. <laughs> I and, hear you, I and, hear you. You know, can I get in? Can he carry my records? What do you do now? Can he carry my flash drive? <laughs> you should be able to support yeah. a play. 
You should be able to support a book. You should be able to, I'll, I buy the, the songs, the downloads. You know, somebody might want to send it to me and if they do, fine. But when I see that it's for sale, like um, Cynthia Lozette Melendez just did a duet. Um, I could have said, Cindy, send it to me. No, I ordered it, I did like everybody else, and then I downloaded it. And because they're not getting rich, you're not getting rich. Um, they're doing it for passion, they're doing it for the fans. And if the least we could do is buy a ticket to a play, literally buy a book, buy a download, even if it's not a CD or a record anymore, then do that. DJs, dancers, singers, producers, comedians, you name it, we have it. This has been the Fever is Real docu-series.